If you've got your copy of scripture, if you'll turn to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 7. Over the last several weeks, we've been kind of dealing with things that sometimes we assume are Christian teachings and they're not. Today is bar none one of the ones that I think uh, we blow up really, really bad. Complete this. Judge not. Yeah, judge not lest you be judged. Now, here's the thing. Jesus said it, but the problem is we misunderstand what Jesus said. And here's what we hear by that is that we can never, ever speak against sin. Because if we speak against sin, we're judging somebody. And Jesus said not to do that. Well, we're going to find out whether that's true or not. Now, we have all had people in our life judge us, right? It's not fun. We don't like it when somebody comes and judges us. But we have to be honest as well that every one of us have judged other people. And so I think we really need to have a good understanding of what Jesus is talking about when he says that we shouldn't judge. What does that mean? Well, I think that judging is a lot like what we talked about last week with hypocrites. Everybody thinks they know what it is and nobody does. It's kind of like what happened on the princess bride when, when he keeps using a certain word and the guy says, you keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think that it means. That's where we are. So I want you to hear the words of Jesus. And we're going to talk about what it means to judge, not so that we're not judged. What does that mean? What does that look like? And how do we apply that in our life? Now, before we read in Matthew chapter 7, I want to give you some context. Jesus is in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. One of the most amazing sermons that's ever been given is the most powerful, wonderful teaching of God. In fact, at the end of this, the people were so awestruck. It actually said they were like struck out of themselves by hearing him teach. And they said, Jesus has taught like no one we've ever heard before. Jesus teaches with authority. Well, as he should, because he's God. In the middle of this, we're going to jump in in, in Matthew chapter 7. And I want you to understand what the Sermon on the Mount is all about so we understand the context when we get here. Jesus is trying to help the people, the Pharisees, the scribes, and the crowd understand that they've completely missed the point on what it means to have a relationship with God. The entire Sermon on the Mount turns everything upside down. They thought relationship with God was about rules and regulations. Do this, don't do this, don't touch that, do touch that. And he says, nope, it's none of that. He wants us to understand that God loves us and wants a deep, personal, intimate relationship with us. And actually, God is filled with grace and not wrath. All they had heard is if you cross this line, if you do this thing, you're out. You can never be loved by God. You can never be a part of his family. And the entire Sermon on the Mount just turns that upside down. And there's a group of people that take a pretty bad beating throughout the Sermon on the Mount, and it's the Pharisees. Jesus was really rough on them and pointed at them and direct to them. And the reason is because they claimed to be speaking for God. And the problem was they were saying a lot of stuff, but it didn't line up with God. And so Jesus is going to attack one of those things today because if you know anything about the New Testament, if you've read anything about the Pharisees, they were pretty judgmental people. And here's what it boiled down to. They believed they were the only ones that lived right. They believed they were the only ones that knew God. They believed they were the only ones that could speak for God and everybody else was broken and cast out. Now, understanding that context, I want you to hear the words of Jesus today. Matthew chapter seven, verse one. Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way that you judge, you'll be judged. And by your standard of measure, it'll be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck that's in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye and behold, the log is in your own eye. You hypocrite. Now, if there's anybody that knows what a hypocrite is, it's Jesus. And it's a bad day when Jesus calls you a hypocrite. But he did. He says, you hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Now, he's going to add something that doesn't seem to fit, but we're going to get to this in a minute. I want you to listen to this, what he says. He then says, do not give what is holy to dogs. Do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. 
okay, Jesus, that's a little bit weird. These two things don't seem to go together. Well, you see, you'll see how they will in just a second. Jesus says, do not judge so that you will not be judged. One of the struggles that the Pharisees had is they believed that God had anointed them to be the spiritual authority in people's lives. And what Jesus is doing in the Sermon on the Mount is systematically, uh, systematically dismantling that idea that God had anointed them to be the spiritual authority. There's only one spiritual authority in your life and his name is Jesus. That's it. So he says, do not judge so that you'll not be judged. So what does Jesus mean by judging? It's a good definition we need to understand. Well, he tells us what he means. There's two qualifications that if you meet these two qualifications, you're judging someone else and you're being a hypocritical judge. Number one, using your own standard of measure and not God's. Did you catch what he said? Judge not so that you will not be judged for in the way that you judge, you shall be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. One of the key components of judging someone is that we use our standard, not God's standard, to measure whether this person is right with God or wrong with God or, or whatever it is. Now, here's the problem. When God judges, God judges in truth. When we judge, we judge by preference. I like this. I don't like this. I like you. I don't like you. God judges in truth, we judge in preference. And the preference of these people were that there were certain groups of people who didn't meet the standard and because they were a part of this group of people, God could never love them. Nothing they could do. Is that true? No, it's not what God said. God judges in truth, we judge by preference. How about this? God, when he judges, does it justly rightly, fairly. When God speaks, it's truth. When God speaks, it's right. When God judges, it's right, it's just, and it's fair. But here's the thing. When we judge, we judge for our comfort. We want to make ourselves comfortable. We don't care if it's just. We don't care if it's right. We don't care if it's fair. We want to be comfortable. When God judges, God judges to bring us to a place of freedom and of health and happiness and wholeness. When we judge, we want to make it easy on ourselves. We make it super easy on us and super difficult on everybody else. Step one in understanding what judging really means is this. When we use our standards to judge someone and we don't use God's. So Jesus is looking out in the crowd that day and he sees a lot of uh, religious leaders there who had been really trash talking all the people in the crowd. And he's looking them in the eye and he says, listen, when you use your standards to judge people, be careful because the way that you judge is gonna be brought back to you. You're using God's measure. You're using your standard and not God's standard. Number two way to know that you're judging, and this is an important one, and this is where people get tripped up. He says, when you highlight other sins while minimizing your own. When you highlight other people's sins and you minimize your own. And he gives a great illustration. I mean, how powerful is the illustration that Jesus gives? He says, you have got a log sticking out of your head and you're trying to get the tiniest little speck out of somebody else's eye. Come on, buddy. Come on. One of the ways that you know that you're judging somebody is when you highlight their sin and you do everything to minimize your sin. This glaring, glaring problem. You have a log sticking out of your head and you're gonna be the one to try to get the speck out of somebody else's eye? What Jesus is saying, which is totally turning everything upside down, is what the Pharisees were doing was so much worse than the people they thought had no relationship with God. 
He said, you have something stuck so far in your eye that you can't see and you can't recognize that the, the thing that this person's dealing with is minuscule. And then what he's also trying to say is this. He says, get the log out of your eye before you try to help somebody else. And here's a little secret. You can't get the log out of your eye on your own. The... These people had a log sticking out of their face. They're standing in front of God and they don't even have the wherewithal to say, God, would you mind taking this log out of my head? Jesus gives us a very simple and concise definition of judging, judging someone. Judging is when you use your standards, not God's, when you highlight other people's sin and not your own. That's judging. So what's the point that he's making here? What, is, what do we need to hear out of this? What, what did the crowd need to hear that day? Well, for a lot of people in the crowd, they needed to hear this, and maybe you do too. God has not appointed you to judge others. You're not the Holy Spirit. Now, I know that this is hurtful, and I'm sorry, but God has not called you to be the Holy Spirit in somebody else's life. I don't care how passionately you believe it. I don't care that you feel like that the Lord gave you a word to give to somebody else. Listen, God does not need you to speak to somebody else. We get in a lot of trouble. And what Jesus was trying to say, you get a lot of trouble when you decide that God has appointed you to judge other people, that God has appointed you to be the standard of what is right and wrong. There is a person who does that and his name is the Holy Spirit and you aren't it. Listen, one of the most difficult things for us to know and understand is that God does not need our help in keeping tabs on people. God does not need us telling on other people. He knows what's going on. God does not need you to be a religious hall monitor taking down notes of everything that everybody has ever done. There was a guy when I went to college uh, he was an RA, he was a resident assistant, it means that he lived in the dorm and he was responsible for making sure that we followed the rules. And he did a great job. He did such a great job, everybody hated him to, to see him coming. He had a clipboard in hand all the time and he was ready to write you up for every little thing. Listen, God does not need God does not want you to be the judge of someone else. There is only one judge and his name is Jesus. What point is Jesus trying to make here? Well, God has not appointed you to judge and your opinion and your preference is not the same as the gospel. Your opinion and your preference is not the same as the gospel. And here's the thing, what happens with that. We get so convinced that our opinion, our preference is right. We think God gave it to us. I've had people get in my business and tell me that I don't love Jesus because I don't read the right translation of the Bible. Now, I don't know, but you can look in the Bible when it doesn't say use this translation, right? Right? I've had people get up in my business because I don't eat certain foods or I eat certain foods that they don't think that I should and I wear certain kind of clothing. We need to remember your opinion and your preference does not equal the gospel. There is truth. There are standards. They're found in here and not from you. All of us could share horror stories that we've had in churches where we've had pastors or deacons or Sunday school teachers or something where they come to us and they have some weird teaching or some weird thought and they make that what the church is all about. I'll never forget, I moved to Georgia. We'd only been in town a couple of months. Saturday morning at 6 a.m., I get a knock on my door and I'm like, 6 a.m. on a Saturday morning? What is going on? I go downstairs because I think it's an emergency and there's 15 people standing at my door and they're from the little church down the road and they came to witness to me and I said, hey, listen, I appreciate what you're doing. I'm thankful for you guys going out and witnessing, but I want you to know, I know Jesus. I follow Jesus. I'm good. 
And they said, are you sure? I said, yeah, I am. And then I told them that I was a pastor thinking that would help. It didn't. I was like, by the way, I'm a pastor and I pastored down. The, oh, we know that church. And then they start sharing the gospel. And I'm like, what about our church makes you think that I'm lost? Well, I didn't check the boxes. I wasn't all the boxes that they had. And it, it was on their sign. Their sign was like 80 feet wide to get all the junk on there. So everybody knew what they believed. And here's what happened. When I told them that I follow Jesus and I love Jesus and I believe in his word, but I don't believe some of the things that you believe, they shook the dust off their feet and walked away. And I know I was the topic of conversation in the sermon the next morning. Can you believe that Baptist pastor down the road doesn't believe like us? <gasps> it's shocking. Your opinion, your preference is not the gospel. And when you judge, when you judge somebody else by something that Jesus didn't make a priority, when you lift up the things that you feel are important that Jesus didn't say was important, he says, this is what the point is. Your judgment pushes people away from God. There were, there were crowds, there were scores of people that came to listen to Jesus because Jesus was saying things they had never heard before, which is crazy. Do you know what Jesus was saying that was so radical? God loves you. God wants you. God wants a relationship with you. And it doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. You can have a relationship with him. And they were just flocking to him because they'd never heard that. Why? They hadn't heard it because the religious leader's opinion and preference didn't follow God's. And they would judge people. And because of that, these people felt far from God. And maybe you feel like that. Maybe there's a scar in your life because some religious person has told you something and you feel scarred and so you feel far from God. And you feel unwanted by God. Listen to what Jesus says. Your judgment is pushing people away. Now I wish that I could have been there the day when Jesus said this because I would have loved to have seen the reaction from the crowd. Jesus looks into the face of the religious people who should have known better, who should have understood God and been able to share what God wanted for people, but they didn't. But Jesus looks them in the eye and here's what he says. How you judge others is how you're gonna be judged. The standard that you use is the standard that's gonna be used against you. I bet you could just feel the oxygen get sucked out of the room. You know what's funny? People who love to judge never want us to judge them. Isn't that funny? Aren't they the ones that get so angry and upset when we use the same type of judgment on them that they use on everybody else? And they'll say things, well, that was not my intention. That's not what I meant. But you don't care what people mean. You don't care what people intend. You can imagine a hush falling over the crowd. The crowd not really understanding how to respond when Jesus is speaking to the religious leaders and telling them, you're judging people. You're pushing them away from God. You're lifting up these things that don't matter that you don't even keep anyway. That's the log and the speck. All the, all the things that they said were important, they didn't even do. But yet, we're better. So while this may seem weird when he says, do not give what is holy to dogs and do not get, or holy to pigs and do not give what is precious to dogs, Jesus is making a pretty powerful statement. He addresses the religious leaders and says, you guys have gotten it all wrong. You're judging. You're not leading people to God. In fact, you're pushing them away from God. And then he looks at the crowd and here's what he says. Do not give what is holy to dogs 
and do not throw your pearls before swine. Jesus is asking the crowd and he's asking you and I to use good judgment in choosing who we listen to. In fact, Jesus really goes for the jugular. He says the Pharisees are dogs and pigs. Now, both of those names were very horrible racist slurs that the Jewish religious elite would use against people. One of the fastest ways for you not to be taken seriously in Jewish culture is for you to be called a dog or a pig. Both were seen as low animals. Dogs is what they called all the other nations that weren't Jews. You're a dog. Pigs were even worse because they ate trash. A pig was anybody who didn't listen to them and didn't follow their traditions and didn't believe that they spoke for God. You're a pig and therefore you're unclean and God doesn't love you and doesn't hear you. But here's what Jesus says. He says, I want you to use good judgment. I don't want you to judge where you're using your standards and you're highlighting their sin and not your, I want you to use good judgment. I want you to be careful who you listen to because the people that you've been listening to are dogs and pigs. Pretty, pretty strong words, right? In fact, what he was saying is this. The people that you've been listening to, they're the ones who are unclean. They're the ones who are far from God. He says, be careful who you listen to because who you listen to determines what happens in your spiritual life. And look at what happens. When you listen to dogs, and you give what is holy to dogs, they trample it. If you give what is precious to pigs, it's not enough. They turn and they want to devour you. He says, be really, really careful who you listen to. Use good judgment. Watch what they say. Listen to what they say. Look at their lives and see if it lines up with who I am. Because they trample what is holy and precious and desire to tear you to pieces. What Jesus is talking about, what Jesus is trying to help us see is that there are always going to be people who stand and say they represent God and commit the worst spiritual abuse there is to us. All throughout the Sermon on the Mount, all throughout Jesus' teaching, he was always showing how he differed from the Pharisees. Sermon on the Mount, he would do it like this. You've heard it said but I say to you, you've heard it said, but I say to you, you've been taught, but I'm teaching you. You've seen, look at what I show you. He says, when you listen to the wrong person, a person who judges, what's going to happen is you're going to get trampled and you're going to get torn to pieces. Jesus was speaking life and freedom. And I hope you hear that today. Jesus was speaking life and freedom because he doesn't want anybody to be spiritually abused. You remember how angry he got when the disciples wouldn't let the children come to him? Because they didn't feel like the children had a place. They didn't feel like the children needed to be there. They felt like it was, you know, just a nuisance for them to be there. And they're shooing them away. And Jesus says, stop, let them come to me. Jesus feels the same way about you. And he gets really angry when dogs and pigs use what is holy and what is precious to trample you and to tear you to pieces. How are they doing that? Well, they they did it in several ways. They would take God's truth and they would twist it to fit their lifestyle. Not these Pharisees, but the Pharisees that they came from added 601 commandments to the 10 commandments as if God wasn't clear enough. So we need to add 600 more commandments on top of God's 10 because God just didn't get it right enough. We got to strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. We got to tell you how far you can walk on Sabbath day without being work. 
We gotta have all of these things, all of these rules and regulations that God didn't seem to think that we needed. They did. So they added to what God said. And in adding to what God said, they took something away. And let me tell you what they took away. They took away life. And in one move of their hand, they took away the life-giving words of God and instead substitute it with death. Because I don't know if you guys know this, but I figured this out in my life. I, I, I can't even keep the Ten Commandments. How in the world am I going to keep 611 commandments? What they found and what they enjoyed doing was tying up heavy burdens and laying them on people and doing nothing to take the burden off. They created it and they did nothing to help. But that also goes so far to make you believe that God doesn't love you, that God doesn't want you, that God doesn't hear your prayers. And unfortunately, I'd like to say that that doesn't happen today, but it does. It's super simple to find dogs and pigs on the radio and on TV and on Facebook and on YouTube and in churches all around the world. And all they want to do is heap heavy burdens on you. If you don't give 10%, God's going to curse you. If you're not here every second that the door is open and you're not serving in every place that you can serve, then God's going to curse you. If you don't believe this weird doctrine that I, that I profess, that God gave me a word to, if you don't believe, well, you're not, you're not saved. If you don't experience you know, salvation in the same way that I do, you're not saved. And we walk away from that. We walk away from that worried and stressed and miserable because here's the problem. They take just a snippet of the truth. They take just enough truth to give their lie validity and we believe it. And then we're trapped. I don't want you to be trapped. I want you to hear the freeing word of Jesus today. You need to have good judgment in who you listen to. Now, here's the thing. I'm not asking you to listen to me. I'm asking you to listen to Jesus. The person who will never lead you astray, the person who will never condemn you, the person who will always speak the truth to you is Jesus. What Jesus is saying to this group and to us is this. They are hypocrites and you don't have to listen to them. Could you imagine being someone in the crowd who had grown up in Jewish society and you've heard all your life that because you were born to a certain family, you were born into a certain city or because you, could, you know, worked in a certain job that God doesn't love you and that nothing that you do will ever change the fact that God doesn't love you. He just made a choice not to love you. But, but these special people, because they were born into the right family, into the right place, and were able to have the right job, God loves them regardless of what they do. See, the, 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 the not so well kept secret about the Pharisees where they looked really good on the outside, but on the inside, they were really horrible people. Jesus says, you look like a, wash, a whitewashed tomb. Have you ever seen a whitewashed tomb? It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. He said, but on the inside, you're full of dead men's bones and all sorts of wickedness because here's the thing, their life didn't match their teaching. Their life didn't match their standards. They didn't do anything that they were holding other people to do. And remember the definition of a hypocrite? A hypocrite is not someone who struggles with sin and falls. A hypocrite is pretending to be something that you're not. And these people were pretending to be the mouthpiece and spiritual authority um, ordained by God, and they were not. And so here's the freedom that Jesus speaks to them and to you. They're hypocrites, and you don't have to listen to them. You're not who they say you are, but who God says you are. Maybe this is something you need to hear today. I don't care what a parent or grandparent 
Sunday school teacher, deacon, pastor, I don't care, bishop, whatever authority title we use in the church. I don't care what someone said about you. You are not what they say about you. You are what God says about you. And if you have to wonder what God says about you, well, look at the cross. God demonstrated his love for you while you were a sinner. Christ died for you. I think that says a lot. You've not gone too far. You've not done too much. You've not broken too many rules for God to love you and save you. In fact, what Jesus was trying to get them to hear, what he wants you to hear, is there's nothing that his grace can't cover. So, how do we apply this to our lives? I think the first thing that we need to understand is this, because this saying gets said all the time, oh, don't judge or you're going to be judged. Jesus said that. It's so funny how people quickly become a Bible scholar who've never read the Bible. That's the, there's only two verses that people outside the church know. It's don't judge. And if, you're, you know, if you have sin, you can't cast the first stone. That's the only two they know. And so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Jesus wants you to understand this. Speaking truth about sin is not judging someone. See, that, that's where we stand in the world today. If you say something about sin and you say, this is right, this is wrong, God declares that, somebody's gonna say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, you, you, you can't judge me. Jesus said that. You can't judge me. And, and honestly, here's the thing. The definition of judging that the world has is this. If you say something I don't like or I don't agree with, you're judging me. Sorry. Jesus made it very clear, didn't he, what judging looks like? You're using your own standards instead of God's and you're highlighting other sins and minimizing your own. When you speak truth about sin, that's not judging someone. It's funny how accountability has now become judging. When we go and speak the truth in love, people just automatically reject it. You're judging me and you can't do that. You know what's so funny about that interpretation? Is that these wonderful biblical scholars who know nothing about the Bible are making the sin of judging greater than the sin that they're committing. And they do that so they don't have to listen to you and they don't have to admit that what they're doing is wrong. When they say, well, you're judging me and Jesus said not to judge, we agree. Yeah, Jesus said not to judge. I agree. That's not what I'm doing. Because if saying something that you don't like or don't agree with is judging, Jesus was guilty of that. And Jesus wasn't guilty of anything. How many times in the gospels does Jesus just speak the truth and the Pharisees don't like it and say, we don't like it. Now we're going to kill you. If speaking the truth is judging someone, then Jesus is guilty of that. So let's be very clear. Jesus does not want us judging people. Can we all say amen to that? Jesus does not want us to be the spiritual authority for people. He doesn't want our preference and our opinion to be the gospel. He doesn't want us pushing people away. We all agree on that. But here's the problem. When we speak truth, that is not judgment. And my favorite thing is when someone follows it up with the greatest line in the world. It's like, man, you just really didn't think that through. My favorite line is this. You can't judge me. Only God can judge me. And I say, you're exactly right. And he has. And you're guilty. And you need to repent. Like, like that gets them off the hook. Only God can judge me. You're right. He has. Now what are you going to do? Or how about the other response? Well, you can't judge me because you're a sinner too. And didn't Jesus tell some people one time that, you know, those who are without sin cast the first stone? See, the problem is you don't read the whole story. In the story of the adulterous woman, the people were doing the same thing the Pharisees were doing. This group of Pharisees were doing the same thing these Pharisees were doing. They concocted a plan to try to trap Jesus and they went and committed sin to get a woman into sin and they grab her out of that sin. They don't bring the man with them. 
And they throw her down in front of Jesus and say, Jesus, what are you going to do about this? She's committed sin. And Jesus says, well, so have you. If you want me to deal with her sin, I need to deal with your sin too. Listen, God's truth does not change based on whether we follow it perfectly or not. Oh, and here's another thing. When someone tells you that you can't speak truth to them because you're not perfect, only a perfect person can speak to them, say he has, his name is Jesus. And this is what he says. Look, so many times we don't speak because we're afraid somebody's gonna call out our sin. And listen, accountability is accountability. But we can never hold back the truth if someone says, well, you can't speak because you have sin in your life and say, okay, why don't you listen to the perfect person who said it? He's perfect. Oh, and he's God too. The two qualifications that you would need to listen to someone who knows what's going on and what needs to happen in your life. So now what do you have? One of the things that Jesus is saying here is this. Speaking the truth about sin is not judging someone. It's the most loving thing that we can do. But how we apply this to our lives is we need to ask ourselves a question. Am I a hypocritical judge? Now, I know all of us are trying so much mental gymnastics to let ourselves off the hook. No, I'm not. I'm not a hypocritical judge. I don't do this and I don't do that. And they do this and they do that. Mm, sounds a lot like what Jesus just said. Am I a hypocritical judge? Do I shrug off the truth because I don't like it? What I'm afraid, and I think what Jesus is concerned about here, what I'm afraid of every Sunday and Wednesday night is that you're going to find something that I say offensive and it's going to hurt your feelings. And then you're going to pick something out about me that you don't like and say, I don't have to listen to this because I don't like this about Michael. Like that lets you off the hook. Listen, don't believe what I say. Listen to what Jesus says. Do you shrug off the truth because you don't like it? If we're honest, we all do that at some point in time. Do I ignore the glaring faults in my life to point out others' faults? There was a a lot of years of my life that I would sit and hear sermons like this and feel that, that poke of the Holy Spirit. And then my defenses kicked in. Oh, you can't be talking about me. I don't, I don't do this. At least I'm not like this. Oh, what about this guy? He's so much worse than I am. Listen, God does not compare you to anybody else. Actually, he does. He compares you to Jesus. That's the standard. Are you ignoring glaring sin in your life to point out the sin of others so that it lets you off the hook? Have I been trampled or torn to pieces? I know that there's a lot of that here. I've experienced that. And so here's a couple of things that I want to tell you that I think Jesus would want you to hear. Not every church, not every minister is a pig or a dog. I, I, I wish I could step into your life and take away the pain that was caused by some pastor or deacon or Sunday school teacher or just some religious person. I wish I could take that away. I wish I could step into your life and not have happened what happened at the church. I wish I could do that, but I can't. But what I can do is tell you this, that not every church, not every minister is a pig or a dog. And what I would say to follow up with that is that Jesus didn't let you down. These hypocrites did. It makes me so sad 
When I hear people say, yeah, I gave up on the church a long time ago. I gave up on Jesus a long time ago. And then they talk about something that someone did. And so I just gently try to remind them, and I want to just gently remind you today, that person isn't Jesus. Now, they may have pretended to be Jesus in your life. They may have pretended to be the Holy Spirit in your life, but they're not. I just want to encourage you that Jesus will never fail you. Jesus will never let you down. Jesus will never hurt you or condemn you. Jesus wants to love you and save you. And listen, you don't have to listen to someone just because they're called pastor. You don't have to listen to them. What you do have to listen to is Jesus and his word. And it's really easy if you start listening to Jesus and his word to see when pastors are not speaking Jesus's word. God wants you to be free. God wants you to be forgiven. God wants you to be healthy, happy, and whole. That only comes when we reject the people who are judging us and keeping us from Jesus and we start listening to Jesus himself. And so here's what Jesus would say to you today. All who are weary, all who are heavy burdened, all who desperately need rest, come. My arms are open. I want to forgive you. I want to make you new. So here's the offer to you today. Listen to Jesus and hear him say, come home. Come home and be set free. Come home and be made new. Come home and be forgiven. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we love you. We ask you right now, as you are speaking to us, that we would listen and that we would respond. Father, that today would be the day that we would finally shake off all of the junk that we've been carrying. That today would be the day that we would finally stop running and we'd surrender our heart and life to you and be made new, given new life in you. Today would be the day that we would finally just say, God, this is gonna be my home. I'm gonna share my life with with you and I'm gonna use my life to serve you whatever we need to do, God, that you would help us to say yes. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, my name is Philip Wright. I'm so glad you were a part of our live stream today. We would love to see you next time to fellowship in person. Remember, we meet on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. or 11 a.m. and we have Sunday school for all ages at 9.45 a.m. Please be sure to check out our website or the church app for upcoming events. We list everything we've got going on so that you don't miss a thing.